Hello, this is uh, Gabor Sabu uh, with the first episode of the Code Maven News uh, podcast and screencast and interview pro- project. And with me is uh, Jason Krom, uh, who's going to talk to uh, about the dancer, the Pearl Dancer project. Uh, hi, Jason. How are you? Hi. Thanks for having me here today. I'm doing great. Uh, uh, I hope it's going to be good. It's the first interview in this format, so. Let's uh, get started. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, okay. Well, I let's see. I've been programming professionally for probably about the last 20 years. Um, uh, the last 18 or so, I had spent, uh, I started the technology company uh, with some others in the United States, and we were writing software for local government here in the States. And uh, last year, I retired from that. And uh, I've I've been active off and on in the Perl community for uh, a number of years. And um, when I decided to get back to work last fall, um, uh, one of the things that I kind of gravitated towards was the Dancer Project, uh, something that I used uh, a little bit in the past. And uh, um, eventually they uh, they had me join their team. And uh, I've been doing a lot with that. Um, And... um, In November, I got hired on by All Around the World, uh, a consulting firm out of France, Uh, and there I'm the technical lead on a project called Vure, which is a massively multiplayer online game written in Perl. So, (laughs) it uh, I spend a lot of time in Perl these days. Okay, is it using using uh, Dancer that project, or it's unrelated? Um, uh, Unrelated to Dancer. But um, there's a lot of overlap with the technologies I use in that project that I use in other aspects of my life. But uh, um, I try to use a little bit of dancer here and there at at my day job when I can. But uh, uh, dancer is is really personally a passion of mine. So. (laughs) Okay, great. So tell tell me about dancer. What what is dancer? uh, Okay. Well, my, my involvement in Dancer is funny, actually. Um, um, back in, in 2012 uh, at, at AAPSI in Madison, Wisconsin in the United States, um, I was looking for a new web framework. The one that I had been using had kind of died out. And I sat in a couple of talks, and um, Sawyer, one of our project leads, um, I just he, he's a very engaging speaker, and um, he had a really good... Uh, really good talk about what Dancer was about. It really just kind of fit the way that I worked. Um, and I submitted a couple of pull requests to them that got incorporated. And then I really didn't get back to it until last fall. And uh, a project I was using had, um, had used Dancer. And um, as I started running into issues with docs and some and and a couple of bugs I noticed, I started sending pull requests and Sawyer contacted me and said, you know, if you keep doing this, that you know we're gonna have to have to assimilate you onto the core team. And and uh, a little bit later, that's that's actually what happened. Um, but but what Dancer is, um, it's um, it's a framework for building web applications and. Um, for those of your viewers who are familiar with Perl, uh, Perl has this great saying that you know making the easy things easy and making the hard things possible, and that's really a philosophy that the Dancer framework has stuck with. Um, if you want to to build a web app and get it up and running quickly, Dancer is a great framework to do it with. Um, if you've if you've never done web programming, uh, if you've never done Perl programming, actually, it's really a, a really nice entry point uh, into the Perl ecosystem. Um, if you're an experienced uh, Perl programmer, you're not going to be disappointed either because um, all of the power and flexibility that the Perl ecosystem allows you, um, you can channel that into your dancer applications, and you can make. Uh, really large and elaborate web applications pretty easily. Uh, The framework takes care of a lot of things that most web programmers don't want to think about all the time. And it it, it does those things really easily, uh, either through the the core of the framework or through the number of plugins that it offers. Um, And uh, it just does what you need to and otherwise kind of stays out of your way. It's, It's great. 
Okay, I understand that there is uh, there's uh, something called Dancer and something called Dancer Two. Uh, is yes. these are two two versions? What is the relationship? And uh, um, are, are you using the, the the new one or? First, personally, my my involvement is almost exclusively with with Dancer Two. Uh, the history behind these um, Dancer started out is a smaller project. Um, by our project founder, Alexi. Um, and I don't know that he quite had envisioned at the time that he created Dancer that it was going to uh, be as wildly successful as it was. And, um, you know, it wasn't really architected with that kind of growth in mind. So when you started getting to some more um, elaborate applications, um, there are some things that would, uh, that would shoot you in the foot a little bit. Um, and so the Dancer 2 project was started from the ground up to address these concerns. And um, it took a couple years of development, um, but early to the middle point of last year, um, it hit a really, hit critical mass, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, and pretty much uh, it, was, it was pretty feature equivalent to what Dancer 2 is pretty feature equivalent to everything that Dancer 1 had had at that point, um, with the exception being the, the plugin ecosystem, which is what we've spent most of 2016 addressing, actually. Okay, so how, what, what kind of plugins are there that are um, most, mostly used or, or that you use or that are recommended? I don't know. My favorite plugins, personally. <laughs> Um, well, there, there's a variety of plugins for everything. There's there's templating. There's there's session and state management. Um, there's plugins for MongoDB, for Redis, for Memcached. Um, there's there's plugins available for generating recaptcha images. There's authorization frameworks. Um, the core of the framework is actually um, is actually pretty minimalistic. You know, it it lets you say if if visitors come to my application and they visit this URL this is what I'm going to present them with or this is the code that's going to happen and a lot of the additional magic with Dancer happens through the plugin ecosystem so Dancer knows how to talk to a templating engine but other than um, other than a, a very simple templating engine at, uh, that we rate with out of the box, um, all the rest of the template functionality is provided through plugins. I use a I use a templating framework called Template Toolkit. Um, I've used it for years. I'm very familiar with it, and uh, that functionality is provided through um, through plugin. Um, I use Redis a lot for caching. Uh, we have both the generic Redis plugin that exposes the functionality of Redis. Uh, we've actually got a session plugin that um, stores your application state information in Redis, um, just like it would any of the other session engines, files, or whatever. Um, but it uh, there's there's a lot out there, and um, prior to this year. Um, one of the things you could do in Dancer 1 that you couldn't do in Dancer 2 was plugins that use functionality provided in other plugins. Um, and this was kind of a blocker for some people moving from Dancer 1 to Dancer 2. Um, and actually, the code for plugin 2 was done a long time ago. But one of our project focuses is on uh, so, sorry, can, can you repeat that? Uh, I think the voice. Uh, oh, um, the um, plugin two um, was actually done very early in 2016, but um, one of our key focuses is stability and not breaking production code. Um, so just releasing plugin two with a lot of breaking changes wasn't going to work for us. So um, a couple of our developers, uh, Peter Mottram spe uh, specifically, took on the lion's share of the SysPeat, uh, as he's known in the in the Perl community, uh, and he he individually tested every um, 
every plugin in the Dancer ecosystem with the new plugin too. Figured out what broke, um, uh, and if we had access to those plugins, we fixed them. And if they were written by somebody else, we actually we actually sent pull requests to the ones that we didn't control, so that we knew out of the gate that the whole plugin ecosystem would function with um, with our new plugin architecture. And it was kind of funny. There were still even a couple that we couldn't. Um, that we couldn't patch. So um, we even spent some time building a compatibility layer so that the Dancer 1 plugins could still use plugin 2 with, uh, uh, with no syntax changes. So um, uh, stability and, and maintaining, uh, uh, you know, uh, not breaking other people's code is, is very important to us. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a known problem uh, that uh, uh, moving forward and uh, and staying backward compatible is is well not compatible with each other, and then uh, you have to make a decision at, at one point, and you basically um, you more or less uh, stop uh, your progress, I guess. Mm -hmm. You can uh, move much uh, slower in order to make sure that you maintain your backward compatibility. Okay, so. Um, are there what what kind of, of projects do you know that uh, that exist that are using uh, Dancer that you could point out? That um, one of the ones that I know of a lot. Um, so the the Pearl Dancer Conference website um, is is actually um, it is a piece of software for for managing the conference registration and. Um, um, so that's actually one application that we have written in Dancer. Um, there's a blog engine called Perlby that was released last year, earlier this year, that is based on Dancer as well. Um, in fact, the uh, the Perl community's blog site uh, is in the middle of being transitioned over to this. Um, I know Booking.com, which is um, a, a huge sponsor and hugely involved in the Perl community, um, has changed some of their blocking tools over to Perl B as well. Um, um, I can think of a lot of companies that are that are using Dancer in their applications and behind the scenes, but um, um, it, as far as like canned software packages like uh, like wikis and blogs, um, I never see a whole lot of those coming out of the Perl community. It always seems like we're focused on on getting other jobs done. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Okay, so um, I think a more or less a closing question here. Um, do you do you have any actually a couple of closing questions? Uh, I think I have. Sure. Um, one of them is um, uh, if you, if someone is want, want to get uh, involved, uh, start using Dancer or or even to, uh, want to contribute, where where do these people need to uh, need to go? How can they find you? Um, the easiest place to start would be our, our website is pearldancer.org. Um, uh, we have an IRC channel uh, on irc.pearl.org. Just come to um, to Pound Dancer and um, and we're there. It's a very friendly community. It's very beginner friendly. Uh, we have a, we have a, a very beginner friendly code of conduct and uh, and we don't tolerate abuse of uh, of new people. So. Um, um, but uh, we're also on GitHub. If you look at uh, uh, if you look on GitHub for Pearl Dancer, um, all the plugins and uh, and the actual source code of Dancer can be found there. Um, our issues, um, our, our open tickets are managed at GitHub, um, and we have a lot of tickets out there that are marked as beginner friendly um, or up for grabs. Um, anybody who wants to contribute to Dancer. Write a plugin. Send us a documentation patch. Um, look for one of the beginner-friendly tickets. Um, it's a very easy project to get involved in. It's it's a very easy to follow code base, um, and it's it's a very thriving and, and happy community of people. So, um, it's one of the things that drew me to Dancer over so many of the other uh, open source projects. Is is we have a really great community. Um. I think that's a great input. I hope uh, some people will join you. Um, do you have any other things to add that uh, we haven't talked about that you'd like to talk about? 
Um, yeah, actually, the, the Pearl Dancer Conference is coming up uh, next month, actually, at the end of September in Vienna, Switzerland. Uh, not only is it a great time to come to Vienna, but it's a great time to uh, for, for both beginning and uh, experienced dancer programmers to come um, learn some great things about dancer, uh, learn about things that we have in the works. Um, you know, get to uh, get to hack on dancer with some of your peers and just hang out and, and enjoy time in, in Austria. Oh, so it's a, it's a pretty long uh, flight from the U.S. Uh, to Vienna. Are you going to be there? Uh, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, if anyone wants to meet Jason uh, at the dancer conference in Vienna, yes, we'll put please uh, come. Yeah, we put, put links in the in the show notes uh, show notes for for the conference and for the other things you have mentioned. So thank you very much for coming on the show, and I hope that uh, uh, in a couple of months we can catch up again with some updates, uh, new releases, or new information about the project. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye bye.